Okay, so that's a short recap. Just uh, some things you should be familiar with already are these uh, laws for logarithms. These are the ones that we've already talked about. So if you've already got them uh, somewhere in your notebook, you may want to condense them all and have one copy to, to refer to. But this is so far what we've learned. We're going to learn three new ones today in addition to this. So uh, let's take a look at the first thing that we're going to do today, which is uh, we'll try and work out how these things are connected to each other. So for example, um, can anybody, I know it's still quite early, but can anybody figure out what those two things are? Five each, yeah, so ten together, so it would be five plus five, so together this would be ten. All right, can you do the next one? Three plus seven. Yeah, three plus seven. Yes. Oops. So three plus seven, which is also ten. And finally, can you do that? One plus nine. One plus nine, yeah. Okay, so how do they relate to the log of 1,024? Well, yeah, that one's also equals to 10. But can anybody figure out how you get from, say, log 32 plus log 32 to log 1,024? Wow, you guys are quick. You had your coffee this morning, huh? <laughs> so, um... 32 times 32 is equal to 1,024. Um, 8 times 128 is also equal to 1,024. And 2 times 512 is 1,024. So that's how they're related to um, the log base 2 of 1,024. And this is to help illustrate the first law that uh, we're going to review today, which is the product law for logarithms. Okay, so basically, if you have two numbers that have been uh, multiplied, so there's a um, multiplication in there. Oops. You can separate them by uh, two separate logs, uh, log x plus log y. Um, it's loosely connected to uh, this law. This is one way it helps me remember that normally when I do a product with exponents, I end up adding the exponents. So a product, if I have a product of the two values, that means the exponents are going to be added together. And remember, logs are always about exponents. So if the exponents were added in this, in this example, that means the logs would be added here. So I'm actually going to prove this one to you. Um, the other ones I won't prove, but... Uh, they're, they're similar, but I'll prove this one to you just to see how it goes. Um, so let's just take a look at what I've got here. I've, I've got, um, I'm going to prove this statement here, that these things are true. Okay, so let's prove this. And you just see how this goes. And don't worry, you don't need to be able to produce proofs until university. So uh, not something that we'll have to do, but calculus, you'll definitely see it for those of you who are going to take calculus. So... Um, Let's just say right now that I've got, uh, I want to be able to talk about these quantities that I have here. So first of all, what I'm going to say is, let's make uh, P equal to log A of X. And let's make um, Q equal to log A of Y. Okay. So what these two statements say is, that implies, I can rearrange these. I could call this a to the p equals x, and um, a to the q equals y. Okay. So if you believe me that these, uh, I've just said those things are equivalent, then these things must follow from that. Right? We've just changed it back to exponential form. That's all I did. Okay. The reason I wanted to do that is now I can talk about this part of the uh, relationship. I can say if that's true, then log A of x times y is equal to log A. And I'm going to use this part of what I just figured out. So it'll be A to the P times A to the Q, which is log A of A. And this is exponent law, P plus Q. And we remember this identity. If you take the logarithm and you raise it to its exponent, 
these things would cancel out, so I would end up with just P plus Q. And we already said that P plus Q were these pieces right here. So that's going to be log base A of X plus log base A of Y. So that way I've been able to string these together to show that they're equal. So um, what I'd invite you to do is copy that down and, and try to follow it. Maybe wait until 10 o'clock sometime or 12 o'clock. Maybe have your lunch and then come back. I know it's early this morning to look at something like this. But um, anyway, doing proofs and things like that, if you're, if you're leaning towards engineering or mathematics in that kind of sense for uh, a future career, then this is something you're going to be doing a lot of eventually. But fortunately, you still have uh, another year or two of freedom before you're expected to work on that level of... Uh, of things. So anyways, from then on in this lesson, I'm not going to do the proofs for you, but there's similar ones to uh, the other log laws. Um, yes? Well, what I did was I said I wanted to be able to talk about these two pieces here. I wanted to be able to talk about these two things. So rather than talk about it as log a to the x and log a to the y, I said let p be equal to that and let q be equal to that. There is some number, p, that exists where um, log a to the x equals p. Anyways, you're expected to be able to use these log laws, so don't fret too much over the proof of it. Um, you're also expected to know the log laws. So, um, I, again, this is what I use. I use this part to help me remember that log law. That's a lot simpler. Okay, so anyway, have your lunch, look it over later, but right now it's, uh, it's still before 9 o'clock, so take a break. Okay, so without a calculator, then we should be able to uh, work out things we wouldn't have been able to before. For example, I can't tell you what the log of 5 is, because that's a pretty difficult number to come up with. But I can tell you what these are, because that would be log 5 times log 2, which is log 10, which is 1. So I don't need a calculator to evaluate that one. Let's see if you can work out the rest that are on the board there. So so that's going to be uh, cubed. So that would be 3. And this would be log base 6 of 3 times 12. So this is log base 6 of 36. So this one is 2. Um, in the next examples, we want to also be able to work the log laws the other way around. So rather than just uh, compressing things, sometimes we may want to expand things. So this would be like that. And we could evaluate these as 1 plus 2. So this would be 3. Um, let's see here. Log base 3 of 27. Log base 3 of 81. So this would be uh, 3 and 4, which is 7. So again, without a calculator, it's pretty hard to do those questions. But uh, if you separate them, then it becomes a lot easier to work without a calculator on them. Um, log base 5 of 25 and log base 5 of 625. Let's see here. So that's squared. And I believe that is 4. So I end up with 6. OK. How are we doing so far with uh, the multiplication law? Product law? All right. Anybody awake right now? <laughs> OK. So let's take a look at the next, uh, the next law and see if you can make a connection. Um, I'll bet you can make it even quicker this time. <laughs> DJ seems to have already figured it out. Um, so this one we know from the first is 10. Subtract 5, so it would be 5. Anybody uh, got the second one? 512 minus log of 16. I'll do the big one. It's 9. <coughs> and 4, yeah, is the small one. So that's 5. And the last one? Yeah, 6 minus 1, which is 5. <coughs> okay, so how do they relate to log 32, which also equals 5? How are they connected? It's, so log 32 equals 5? Yeah, 
That's a subtraction this time. So 1,024, if you divide it by 32, you end up with 32. Same thing if you go 512 divided by 16, or if you go 64 divided by 2. They all add up, they all, sorry, have a quotient of 32. So this is the, uh, the law for the quotient law, which again, it's very similar to what you already know from the exponents. 